Every year, around 640,000 tonnes of fishing gear is lost or discarded into our oceans. Most fishing gear, like everything else in the linear economy, has not been designed from the start to be remade, so it can continue to kill wildlife long after the fishing boats have left it behind. We're here in Cornwall to meet Waterhall. We've been working in collaboration with them on a new product that offers a solution to the problem of discarded fishing gear. Oh! Hello, dog. So, here's your litter picker. Thank you very much. Made from recycled fishing nets, of course. Cheers. And your hoop. Perfect. Made from recycled fishing nets. And our sail bags. And uh, yeah, let's, let's go for a litter pick. Let's do it. As a surfer, as a diver, someone who loves the ocean, you can't not see plastic pollution because you're literally walking past it every single day. So I went to study marine biology. The more you learn, the more you see, the more it becomes impossible to ignore. But it was the issue of ghost gear, you know, lost, abandoned, discarded fishing gear in the ocean that really spoke to me and was something that the more I looked into it, the more I learned. The more I saw it and the more I couldn't believe that this issue was out there being unchallenged. I started with a connection with the ocean, but it grew into wanting to protect it. Can you explain to me how big the problem of discarded fishing gear is? It's the most abundant type of plastic by weight. And it's not only just its abundance, it's the fact that it's just the most harmful type of plastic as well. It was designed with the sole purpose to catch and kill marine life. And it doesn't matter whether it's no longer attached to a vessel, it continues with that purpose, unless you know, we can come in and break that cycle. And how does it turn into a product? We collect this directly from our coastline. And our first step is to kind of sort and segregate the different types of plastic and the different types of polymers that are used to create these, these types of fishing gear. Our first stage is to then shred that down into the fibres. We can then wash and remove those contaminants that are inevitably in amongst these nets. And once we melt those fibres down, we create pellets. So it's extruded and these pellets become our raw material. And that's really the stage when we've, we've gone from something that is waste into something that's a resource. For us, sunglasses were the perfect product. They demonstrate this concept of waste into something that is purposeful, functional. We build sunglasses that are designed to last a lifetime, so they're something that you can really, really value. And if you have this connection with the ocean, there's a good chance you're going to be out there needing this kind of product. So it really suited what we were trying to achieve. Similarly to as a Rapa Nui, you see waste as a resource. There should be attitude change around how we, how we think of waste. We want to totally rethink the problem. And I think when brands like Rapa Nui and Waterhall demonstrate this concept of a circular economy, these products kind of become symbols for you know, this concept. And as a consumer, you're asking if they can do it, why can't everybody else? 